All right, just a little slight delay while uh, it brings up all of these um, tabs. We probably won't use them all, but essentially the passive recon, it means that you are doing research on a target and your target has no idea that you're doing it. We'll just discuss a couple of quick things that you can do from an attack perspective. Um, you know, you more, you more than likely will want to create a fake account or fake aliases if you're using Google Chrome. Google Chrome gives you the ability to use different profiles. Um, if you can see, if I click on this profile here, I have a profile called Tyrone Wilson, but then I also have a profile called Training. Then I also have a profile for uh, when I use Burp Suite. And you can have different settings and bookmarks and extensions in each of the profiles. So <clears throat> ways that you can create a fake profile is starting with a fake picture. And that picture can be at a website like uh, this person does not exist. This website creates um, AI generated images of people that aren't real. So you can just come to this website and um, uh, you can refresh this site as many times as you want until you get an image of a, a you know, person that you like to be. Uh, but then there's also password managers. Um, I use LastPass that will help you keep up with all of your various accounts. Um, the cool thing about this is that normally in Chrome, if you right click on a picture, um, there's an option to search Chrome for this image. In Google Chrome, we will let you know all of the different places that it's seen that image. Because this is an image that's being created for the first time, um, it's not going to show up anywhere else. Um, therefore, it will make your profile look really legit, as opposed to, uh, you know, if we were to look up someone like uh, Joe Shear under images, and we search Google for this image, <clears throat> uh, this Joe Shear image comes up in quite a few places. So obviously, um, we can quickly tell that the image of Joe Shear that they use um, isn't real. All right, so first you start with Google. Um, our target for today will be Megacorp One. That is a company I'll just put it in quotes. Google will give you, um, you know, the best image, I mean, the best information very quickly. So just by looking at the summaries of this organization, you can get the who, what, when, where, why. You can also start harvesting email addresses, um, Twitter accounts, a GitHub account. There's a PDF that uh, links them, Twitter accounts, the LinkedIn uh, company page right here. The company page is passive, but you know, if you go to the um, individual users page, um, that is not passive at all. So you can see there's about 500, over 500 people in this company go to list all the employees, but um, LinkedIn has an option for locations. So you can see that this company has people in Las Vegas and Vietnam. You click on Las Vegas, there'll be a slew of people that show up. 
Uh, probably the best way to see that is uh, um, you do a company, um, not many corp, you do a company like ESPN, but then instead of that, you do Hartford, it will show all of the people that are in the Hartford, Connecticut area for ESPN, right? Still passive. I'm just kind of flying around a little bit. Um, from a physical standpoint, uh, there is a website called wiggle.net. What wiggle.net does is that it will identify all of the SSIDs for a particular area. So, um, um, you put in a, you know, an address, I'll do Pennsylvania Avenue in California. So Pennsylvania Avenue in California, it's already going to list all of the SSIDs for the wireless, um, for the wireless routers that it found in that area. So attackers are using this. They know that they're going to a, a certain area. They will name the SSID on their router to Kenwood Fairfield-5. Um, get there before everyone else. Do not put a password on it. And because people will be looking for this, uh, they'll join. That's why it's good to not auto-join um, wireless access points. Um, there is a website called the OSINT framework with the OSINT framework and OSINT stands for open source intelligence. What the OSINT framework does is it helps you find websites uh, for things that you may be looking for. So for instance, uh, right here, I'm looking for a website that will help me find different email addresses. Um, I want to do a, a spam reputation list. So there's the DNS black hole website. <clears throat> I put in the email address and it will tell me, um, just, it will let me know if it's, you know, give me some information about this black hole list. Right, so that is great. We did talk about the have I been pwned on the back end of this, another feature of this is that you can get notified if your email address um, is compromised. So that can help. Um, also, if you're part of a domain, I think this may cost extra, but you can put your domain name in here and you'll get a notification if any email address that includes your domain is part of a breach. <clears throat> so that does come in handy. Follow me for Twitter analytics. If you happen to find someone's Twitter handle, you can use follow me to uh, gather some information about this individual and their accounts. I used it myself as an example, and you can see some information about my profile um, when I joined my location, my bio, a URL, the tweets, uh, the things that I talk about most recently, uh, the bigger the word, the most recent, or the more you talk about it. These hashtags are the hashtags um, that you have used most recently. And these are all of the individuals um, that this, that I have communicated with most recently. Right, um, so this is a, a way to do some passive recon using Twitter. It would also tell you the Twitter client that I use. So based on my tweets, you can pretty much deduce that I have an iPhone. Right, so as an attacker, right, I would start looking for um, iPhone exploits as opposed to Android exploits. Uh, gives you an idea of when a person is tweeting. So I still tweet when most humans tend to sleep. So it gives you an idea of when you can and cannot uh, 
what is a good idea to, to, to try to communicate with the person. So we talked, follow me, we talked, LinkedIn. Um, let's close that. Uh, let's go to a, a, a site called Domain, Domain Dossier or Central Ops. For the most part, as an analyst, you'll be here a lot because you want to try to gather who is and DNS information on a particular IP address or domain. And there's a couple of ways that you can go about this. So you can get the who is record or the DNS record for a particular IP address. Um, let's do a dot 70, right? And it will tell you um, some information about this IP address. This website may have limitations to the amount of queries that you can identify um, that or that you can put in, but you know it's letting you know some things about it. Like, and, and we'll talk about it more. The the name servers. Um, it will give you some point of contact information. It will give you like a physical location. So two old Mill Street um, in Rachel, Nevada. An IP, I mean a phone number that you can call. Right, so this is a good way to get some beginner information about the IP address. <clears throat> but you're gonna want more. So let's talk about this from a, a physical perspective first. They're in two old mill, on two old mill street. So I would go to Google Maps. Right. Um, and then in Google Maps, I would just put in that physical location to Old Mill Street. Um, and I think that was in Rachel, Nevada. Right. So what I like to do is I like to look at it um, from with the satellite view, right? This is what it would look like from the satellite view. From an attack perspective, I would be thinking about my entry and exit strategies. Maybe I can pretend like I'm just driving in to get gas. Um, from this aerial view, I can see where I need to park to get a good view of the front door to see people that are coming in and out. Maybe with a nice camera, I can get pictures of people's badges so I can now start matching names and faces to um, what I've seen on LinkedIn. Also in Google Maps, if you click on this uh, little person here, you get these dots. And these are preview dots. Uh, I'm just going to click on this. On this image, you'll see a little pop up that showed up. Uh, on what it would look like on the inside of this building. But if you click on it again, it literally brings you inside. So if you're an attacker, if you're doing a pen test, um, you can discuss um, strategies about where you're gonna sit, what the conversation's gonna be about, what you're gonna talk about, uh, and, and things of that nature. All right, so this is something that you would do um, for your establishment to see if your establishment is displaying information of this nature. <clears throat> um, there is a Google hacking database. This Google hacking database um, gives you really complex syntaxes on um, obtaining um, information. There's quite a few things that you can filter for here, uh, so you can filter for vulnerable files or files that contain usernames. And this is how this would work. So basically, um, Google is giving you some recent syntaxes uh, that you can use to look for uh, things that are awfully specific. And we'll just use this one uh, in root. So, I clicked on it, 
it gives you a little bit information about this search. Um, this is the um, exact Google search or the syntax. All right. Um, let's go back. That's not what I was looking for. But I wondered if I clicked on the wrong one. Um, this is called the Google Dork 2, by the way. Um, I wanted something that was in the URL. <clears throat> so I think I was here and uh, I wanted the Google, not here, but, uh, but just so you know, um, this is also an exploit database and it has 42,000 exploits. So even as a defender, you need to be aware that attackers have access to 42,000 exploits. They can click on this has app function. Um, there's 7,000 entries for here. So the only thing an attacker needs to do is get their victim to install this app. And then now they're vulnerable to this uh, exploit. But I think I was at the, um, I think I was at the GHDB, which is the Google Hacking Database. Uh, let's see, we were looking for something like a, right, so in this URL, um, it's giving you the syntax, you're fine as long as you don't click on any one of these. But what you can do is you can come in and change this syntax to suit um, what you're looking for. So for me, where it says in URL, um, I'll just do a cover6solutions.com and kind of just change a little bit of this just to see if anything shows up from my domain. And that's how you would use the Google dorking. Of course, at, from an attack perspective, you would use it to try to find vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. um, from an infrastructure perspective, uh, you could use a tool like Robotex to gain information about your infrastructure to see what you're displaying to the world and so i just put in uh, megacorp.1 which is a, a fake organization so megacorp1.com and it goes and identifies all of the dns information from name servers to mail servers to a records to quad a records and we'll end up learning more about that um, in the future and then also you know their subdomains um, this is important because you see that there's a mail.megacorp1.com and an intranet.megacorp1.com and if we were going to be a little bit of active uh, you can and we go to intranet.megacorp1.com um, or mail.megacorp1.com it's good to know that those exist because we have already seen that uh, we can clone a website in about 30 seconds, right? So we could have cloned this and then use it for a social engineering attack. Um, to, it snowed today. So today would have been a perfect opportunity to send out some social engineering emails saying, hey, we're gonna be off tomorrow. Um, make sure when you check your mail when you're working from home to use this site right and we already saw that once they type in a username and password just going to take them to another site not going to give an error or anything but we don't even care at that point because we've already captured their usernames and passwords shodan if anything has ever been connected to the internet ever um, it's going to show up here um, so remember that service VSF 
TP BSF TPD 2.3.4. What Shodan does is tells us how many people in the world are currently using that service. Right, so we know that we can exploit this service in about, I don't know, four seconds, which means that there's 3,000 people in the world that we can exploit right now. Um, what hackers are doing is they're using a tool like this to identify a vulnerability. Let's say in a baby monitor, there's a particular service that allows for remote exploitation and they'll um, put that service in here and then they'll start to drill down okay how many people are in the united states um and i think i might need to log in right yes yeah, so i have to log in and then you can drill down into uh specific countries so i am in um, Right, uh, so my state will be US. But I can still drill down by the top cities. So now I can start uh, looking for people that I don't like in New York. Uh, the six people in New York that I can go and exploit right now. So that's how that works, uh, census IO. Some of these you will wanna ensure that you get accounts for. I do have accounts. You can see my password manager is automatically kicking in. Um, there are lots of companies and tools out there that are constantly scanning the internet for you already. Uh, you can scan the entire internet in about four and a half minutes. So, this is a tool that's doing it for you. Um, it's letting us know what ports and services are running on uh, these I particular IPs that you put in here. One of my favorite tools is by uh, Farsight Security. Uh, they are local to the DMV area. They are also friends of ours. We are uh, really good friends with them. They have what's called uh, a DNS DB app. Uh, there is a free trial. It's called DNSDB Scout and you can make um, 100 DNS queries a day. So you get an API key, download the tool, and then just download this API key uh, to your Scout. Um, because we're friends with them, um, I got a different API key that allows for 250 queries a day. And what you can do, and I'll tell you why this comes in handy. Um, I was doing EKSEP earlier, but I will do a cover six solutions asterisk dot cover six solutions dot com. <clears throat> and what this does, and why it comes in handy, is it will tell you um, the first time it ever saw this domain, right? The IP address that it used. And then you can also see the name servers, all of the uh, DNS records. Because this is passive DNS, there's no way to get around this. Um, right, so this IP that it used, 64.11, um, was actually seen back in 2014. This comes in handy because as an analyst, you can, if you happen to identify a malicious IP and you see it in here, you can click on the IP and then this IP will also tell you every single domain that it has ever used. So when you're creating whitelists and blacklists, right, um, this malicious pos this malicious activity used this IP this IP also used all of these other domains. So you may want to block these other domains as well. 
right? So that's, uh, you know, a great tool to have. We did not have it um, back in the day, but, um, you know, uh, another thing that you can clearly see is that uh, um, because it's, well, a lot of, one another thing that you can see is that um, often if you use a shared hosting site like uh, GoDaddy or DreamHost or SiteGround, um, you can clearly see that multiple domains use the same IP. So oftentimes it's smarter to block the domain in lieu of blocking the IP address because we could end up blocking access to all of these uh, domains by blocking the IP. Facebook is always a good tool to do some passive recon. We won't get into it. GitHub as well. Um, GitHub will let you know if they're you know, working on uh, different projects that are, are made available. Um, but another good tool is this, this gray noise. Um, what gray noise does is it um, has sensors all over the world and you put in an IP address um, and it will let you know if the IP address has been seen uh, possibly uh, trying to identify uh, vulnerabilities. So gray noise um, identifies IPs that are looking for specific vulnerabilities, right? So in specific ports and services. So you can say, well, this IP address may not be malicious, but gray noise did identify this IP as looking for this. <laughs> particular vulnerable service. And it didn't um, make all of those requests for nothing. Um, another good site is uh, Threat Connect. They are also local. Um, what Threat Connect does is it helps with attribution at the unclassified level. Um, I think I do have an account for Threat Connect as well. And what Threat Connect does is you put in, uh, let's see, where do I log in? Right, it will help you identify uh, what a malicious IP or domain or what, what have you um, has been involved in in the past. Right, so it's kind of like Intel sources. Uh, it's kind of like a, let's see, 38. .100. 193.70. Right, so um, it will give you some information about a uh, particular IP address. Um, so that's another good source, <coughs> sorry, to be aware of. Uh, Hunter.io um, is a site that lets you um, scrape the internet for email addresses. There's also a lot of different things you can do on the Kali Linux, on the Kali Linux side really quick um, as well, but we will um, talk about tools in a future um, session. All right, so some of the things that I want you all to do in preparation for next week is to download and install Wireshark. Um, maybe do a research on a tutorial on how to use Wireshark. We're gonna use it a lot uh, moving forward. Um, Wireshark is your protocol analyzer. Um, if you wanna look at some sample PCAP files, uh, there is a MTAM or a malware uh, traffic analysis page that has tons and tons and tons of sample PCAPs. Um, you can have an entire career just by being good at Wireshark and protocol analysis. Um, I say this because for any SOC analyst interview, 
there's probably a 90% chance that there'll be a technical portion of the interview. And in the technical portion, they're gonna hand you a PCAP file and they're gonna tell you, they're gonna ask you what's going on. We'll also talk about um, the Windows Active Directory. So you can be ahead of the game by doing some research on the Windows Active Directory domain services, All right? And then lastly, uh, we're gonna talk vulnerabilities and analysis. Um, Nessus is free for the first 16 IP addresses. Um, so if you wanna download Nessus, um, you can, and you can scan up to 16 IP addresses using Nessus. So you can get comfortable using a vulnerability scanner. Um, you will need an anti activation code but you can see that they don't ask you for much information. Um, we do have a pro version. We did spend the two grand to get the pro version. I will run some scans using the pro version so you can see what those results look like. Um, but if you register for the free version, all they ask for is the first name, last name, and email address. All right, so again, in preparation for next week, um, download and install Wireshark. If you're using Kali Linux, it's already installed in Kali Linux, but you can install it separately. Let's learn about the Active Directory uh, domain services. This is very important, uh, considering 90% of the market is a Windows machines uh, running Microsoft, and then the vulnerability analysis using you know any vulnerability scanning tool that's out there. All right, um, how is everyone feeling? Is this a good pace that we're going at right now? Is there anything that was uh, too much, too fast? Um, please let me know uh, in the feedback, either in an email or what have you. Like I said, I am, we are family now, so feel free to email me at any point should you have any questions or comments this video will be posted to the site. I'm gonna to try to get it up later on tonight, um, just so you can uh, always have access to it. Whew. Okay, so um, um, moving forward, I'm gonna put more of a concerted effort to keep you all engaged. So be prepared to answer questions uh, as we move forward. All right, so it was a good night, everyone. Um, we have four more weeks of this. All right, sounds good. Okay, um, have a good night, everyone.